Hello, and welcome to the Tavern Chat Podcast. I am your host, Eric Tenkar, your bartender in the OSR, your main proprietor at the Tenkar's Tavern blog. Same named Facebook group, MeWe group, Discord server. You can find us everywhere. Everywhere. So, before I get on to the main topic of uh, today's podcast, Joe the Lawyer called in in regards to it's pretty much Chicago Wiz calling in the show. And Joe. Uh, it's also just looking at old school essentials. I have my old school essentials from the Kickstarter. It's an ama- the box set and the all in one book look amazing. I really gotta do a read through, but neither here nor there. Let's listen to Joe for a minute. Hey man, Joe the Lawyer. Good episodes on A D and D and all the headaches and confusion it's caused as I read this. Uh, the old school essentials. I'm I'm looking at it with a, with a with a different eye now, especially playing in Tim's game. You know uh, what you could do with this with a basic stripped down product. It's really awesome. And old school essentials does have the advanced rules compendium stuff. You know what I mean? So you get all the uh, all the all the best of AD and D in a simplified way. You know, stripped down. And it's also great to hear from uh, Chicago is Michael Shorten there, one of the first old school bloggers. Man, his roots are deep. Uh, he gets great stuff. Great stuff he put out. Um, I'm glad to see he has a podcast. I didn't know that. There's got to be a way to, to find any other, other people. I mean, the Anchor podcast searching capabilities suck. <laughs> there's, no, there's no way around it. Um, you type in certain words and letters, it doesn't, doesn't show up when, it, when you think it ought to. I wish there was a better way to find all the OSR podcasts out there rather randomly like this. Yeah, Joe, it really is good to hear from uh, Chicago is Michael Shorten. I actually saw Michael, not this year's. Game Hall Con, last year's Game Hall Con, and that was actually very exciting. It was cool. It, it, it's, it's, you know, one of those people that when I came back to the hobby, really helped solidify what the hobby was that I was coming back to and, and why I enjoyed it so much. So I'm glad to see he's active again. And uh, I want to hear more about your opinions on uh, BX Essentials, because from first glance, I haven't had a chance to sit down with it. Uh, sorry, not BX Essentials. Old School Essentials <laughs> was BX Essentials prior. Uh, it looks really, really good. The physical product looks really, really nice. So, what are we going to talk about today? Well, remember how I mentioned the One Ring? Uh, the license was pulled from Cubicle 7 or going to lapse or whatever. Cubicle 7 was either not really... It, it's not quite clear exactly what the situation is. But it looks like Cubicle 7 is uh, the party that decided either to not re-up or back out. And I say this because they sub-license from Sophisticated Games, who has the token license. Now, here is a Facebook uh, post from Sophisticated Games regarding this whole topic. Sophisticated Games commissioned the One Ring from Francesco Nepitello. I'm sure I'm getting some of that wrong. But in any case, back in 2008, the game that he, with Marco Maggi, or Maggi, M-A-G-G-I, again, I'm horrible with fucking names, created, exceeded our best expectations, and has gone on to become one of the best and successful role-playing games of all time. Francesco and Sophisticated Games have had many other collaborations since then. We were saddened and indeed surprised to learn this week from Cubicle 7, our long-term distributor and publishing partner, that they had decided against publishing the second edition of The One Ring. But not only are they not going to publish the second edition of The One Ring, they are withdrawing from the license. So sometime... Next year, they will no longer be able to sell it. So basically, everything that's been written and not yet published is pretty much not going to be published by Cubicle 7. Um, This came to this came in the middle of some discussions on the dynamics of how Francesco, Sophisticated Games, and Cubicle 7 should work together in the future. 
But at no stage had there been any suggestion that the One Ring 2 would not be published. Hmm. That's a little, uh... You know, it, it, it's, it's a very opaque view behind the curtain. You can tell that... Um, yeah, it looks like there's a little friction in that spot there. Fans of the game should be assured that sophisticated games, in conjunction with Francesco and Marco, will do their best to rectify the current uncertainties. And there are some comments on N-World, and I think also on possibly possibly the RPG pub, but definitely on M-World, where people have reached out to sophisticated games and said, uh, is there going to be more the One Ring material? And they're like, certainly, yes, of course. The lines will continue, or the line will continue. I don't know if that means the Adventures in Middle Earth also, or just the One Ring. Couldn't tell you exactly. None of us can. But it looks like sophisticated games has the rights to the One Ring. I always figured it was Cubicle 7. Obviously, I was wrong. So, now the question becomes, what happens with the second edition of the One Ring? The material for the rules and such has already been written, or pretty, yeah, pretty much ready to be published, when they decided not to go forward with it, that they being Cubicle 7. Does this mean that they are going to sell or license that material back to sophisticated games so sophisticated games can take it to the next step or license some? It's going to be a very interesting thing because it doesn't look like the game system or the game is ending, but some other company is going to get the license. Kind of like how the license for, oh, I don't know, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, Warhammer 40K RPG, recently, well, recently, recently, but in the last year or two, uh, went to Cubicle 7. Could it be that Cubicle 7 has too much on their plate? Could it be that uh, the One Ring, which has uh, started development, I guess, back in 2008, uh, is reaching the end of its viable lifespan. When I say viable, as as gamers, it's all viable if you enjoy it, but as, a, as something that's being marketed and sold, it could be the monies that are coming back aren't enough. When I say aren't enough, it's not enough for maybe Cubicle 7. Now, Cubicle 7, from what I've heard, I saw this mentioned not just on N-World, but from... Uh, people with a little inside knowledge in this community, uh, a Cubicle 7 has had a real difficulty hitting its release dates. It's almost like everything they're releasing for, or were releasing for the One Ring, had a Kickstarter release date where you build six months into that release date and assume that six months is that padding. Like, oh, we're good. it'll be out in July. Right, if you get it by January, it's kind of on time. Uh, because I'm assuming sophisticated games doesn't get paid until product releases. If you're not releasing product and they're not making their money, then that could be an issue too. I don't know. I'm spitballing. It's what I do. Now, uh, to just throw one other thing into this discussion before I, I bow out. Um, or... Somebody asked on social media why I have such a uh, a vendetta, basically, against James Draghi. I don't. Okay? I have conversed with James in the past uh, via Hangout. He was very personable. I was uh, uh, questioned for advice. He sought me for advice when he was doing those 12 Kickstarters at a time. I, the advice that I gave, which was basically you are going to cannibalize your projects and your backers by running 12 at a time, was dismissed as me not knowing shit. And that's fine. <laughs> but uh, when it comes to James's shock jockery over the last 
two or three years. I guess I'm I'm just tired of it. I wish things would go back to writing and publishing good shit, usable shit, not stuff that has to shock. Shock is, it, you know, it might get you some quick sales up front, but I don't believe it gets you long term fans. But you know, I could be wrong, and I'm also annoyed, fucking annoyed, that the ref book. Is still not out for Lamentations of the Flame Princess, and that he's now basically <sighs> dictating his uh, random thoughts to a third party, which they're going to they are going to then turn into a, a ref book. That's not what I backed for. That's not what anybody backed for. And I do know there's a portion of this community that believes that you know James shit's gold. He very well might be. I happen to think that what looks like gold in the shit tends to be corn. It happens. All right. It's nothing personal against James, but, you know, that rough book, man, that, that's, that is a burr up my ass. So, yeah, that, that, that frustrates me. All right, folks. On that note, as always, be safe, be well, God bless, roll those dice. And I will talk with you all tomorrow. Later, folks.